हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर विकास शर्मा आई एम ए स्किन स्पेशलिस्ट एंड हेयर ट्रांसप्लांट सर्जन एट डैमा वन क्लिनिक टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ वेरी कॉमन हेयर प्रॉब्लम दैट इज एलोपेशिया एरियाटा आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग व्हाट इज द ट्रीटमेंट फॉर एलोपेशिया एरियाटा हाउ यू कैन अचीव हेयर ग्रोथ इन दोज बॉल्ड पैचेज एंड आर देर एनी होम रेमिडीज अवेलेबल फॉर एलोपेशिया एरियाटा एंड वेदर दे शुड बी यूज और नॉट सो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद यू एलोपेशिया एरियाटा इन डिटेल so let us first try to understand what exactly is alopecia areata and what are the causes alopecia areata basically is an autoimmune problem uh, what that means is your immunity by mistake it tries to damage your own hair so there have been lots of studies on the development of alopecia areata it has been noticed that our immune cells they come close to the hair that we have on our head or beard or eyelashes or eyebrows and they try to damage those hair once these hair are temporarily damaged they fall off and this leads to a smooth non scarred area of baldness there is a brown smooth bald patch which develops it can happen on your scalp it can happen on your eyebrows it can happen on your beard almost any part of the body which has hair can be affected now this hair loss we have to understand is temporary that means the stem cells which give rise to these hair they don't die in this process so first thing is that you should not worry too much about alopecia areata these hair can regrow back since alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition other autoimmune disorders like type 1 diabetes thyroid issues skin allergies like atopic dermatitis and other allergic disorders can also happen simultaneously with alopecia areata so patients who have alopecia areata may have some of these conditions as well now alopecia areata also has some genetic reasons so it has been seen commonly that certain genes they predispose to the presence of alopecia areata so it may run in families also if one of your family member is affected by alopecia areata you also have a slightly increased risk of developing alopecia areata now coming to how does it look so when you see the patches of alopecia areata what we see commonly is a smooth bald patch usually circular in shape which is commonly seen on the head but as i said it can affect almost any body part which has hair so these smooth bald patches they appear completely hairless this is the commonest presentation of alopecia areata now uncommonly it may present as a peripheral pattern so for example the hair in the periphery of the head this area may also go away other than these types sometimes some patients can lose almost all the hair on their head this type of alopecia is known as alopecia totalis rarely some patients may lose all the hair on their body that is hair of their head eyebrows eyelashes arms legs everywhere so this type of alopecia is known as alopecia universalis now the diagnosis of alopecia is pretty straightforward just by looking at you your doctor usually will be able to tell you that you have alopecia areata sometimes some tests may be required but that's not usual now let's discuss the treatment for alopecia areata as i said the treatment usually gives very good results the hair loss is temporary so almost all the hair can be regrown with the help of treatment so the treatment is usually very easy for patchy type of alopecia areata if you have a few patches of alopecia areata then you can expect almost complete regrowth in 6 to 8 months now if we talk about the other patterns of alopecia areata as i have said ophiasis pattern that is when you lose your hair from the sides of your head that pattern is relatively difficult to treat so does not respond very easily to treatment and can come back again and again so this is one pattern of alopecia areata which is difficult to treat other patterns like as i said alopecia totalis and alopecia universalis they are also a little bit difficult to treat Uh, with the treatment these patterns typically regrow hair but then after stopping the treatment the hair can go away again so this is one problem which is seen in these patterns in some patients spontaneous recovery of all alopecia areata patches can also happen but this usually takes a long long time so treatment is usually recommended for alopecia areata now coming to the treatment of alopecia areata it depends on the extent of the disease so if you have a lot of patches you may require tablets and systemic treatments if the patches are very small or few in number then injections or creams may be prescribed to you so the commonest type is when you develop small patches so 
I'll describe the treatment of that thing first. So if you have small or few patches in that situation, usually injections of steroids like trimsinolone, all these injections are given into the skin. Usually they are given once every month and after around two to three injections, you can see a considerable improvement in your situation. Sometimes for patients who are not very keen on getting injections in their scalp, they can apply creams such as steroid creams. These creams can help you regrow hair. Other lotions which are available such as minoxidil, which is, which is commonly given for male pattern or female pattern hair loss. That can also be used for alopecia areata. Sometimes irritants like azelic acid, retinoids, all these things can also be applied on the scalp and this can lead to hair regrowth. Sometimes chemicals known as sorolens can also be used to treat alopecia areata. These chemicals can be used as a lotion. That is, you have to apply a few drops on the affected area or you can take them as a tablet also under medical supervision that is. And after taking these tablets or applying this lotion, after around 30 minutes to two hours later, you have to expose the affected area to sun or to certain wavelengths of UV lights. When this thing is followed, after around a few months, you can notice some regrowth in the affected areas. Other than this, there are other methods also like excimer laser, which can be used to regrow hair in these areas. Now, if the disease is extensive, that is if you have a lot of patches or there's almost complete loss of hair on the head or on other parts of the body, then systemic corticosteroids may be required for a short duration. These tablets or medicines are given usually daily, but sometimes they can be given twice a week or thrice a week so as to reduce the chances of developing side effects. So when you take these tablets in a few months or so, you can notice a good amount of regrowth on the top of your head or wherever the, there are patches of alopecia areata. Now steroids, they are immunosuppressives. What that means is they will suppress the immunity. So when you take tablets of steroids, your whole body's immunity will be lowered. Now, if you take injections of steroids on your scalp or if you're applying creams of steroids on your scalp, then the immunity of that area will be lowered. Now, this thing helps because as I said, alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition. So your abnormal immune response, when it is suppressed, your hair will start regrowing back. But this can have side effects also as our immunity protects us against infections. So if it is taken unsupervised, it can have severe side effects. So my recommendation to you would be never take steroids or any other immunosuppressives without medical supervision. Now other immunosuppressives such as cyclosporin, they are also used in the treatment of alopecia areata. They work in a similar mechanism. So these also should be taken under the supervision of a doctor only. Now certain tests are also done when you are on these medicines. Other than these, there are other medicines also which are being developed nowadays. Such medicines are tofacitinib, ruxolitinib. So these are usually second line therapies. What that means is that if you are not responding to the conventional medicines like steroids or other irritant lotions, if you're not responding to all these things, then these therapies may be considered, but these are not used routinely. Then coming to other lesser tried therapies, these can be some immunomodulators such as cholesterol lowering drugs. They have also been studied, but as I said, these studies are not very extensive. So these are usually used as a last resort. Now coming to home remedies, a lot of patients are interested in treating alopecia areata with home remedies. So now the typically asked questions are whether I can use onion juice on it or not, whether I can use garlic on it or not. So I want to tell you that alopecia areata is a temporary problem. By doing home remedies, which can be dangerous, you can cause burns in that area which can permanently damage your hair. So my advice to you would be avoid home remedies as much as you can. Having said that, onion juice, there was a single study which was conducted in a few patients which suggested that yes, it can, because of it, its irritant reaction, it can lead to hair growth in some patients. But as I said, there was only a single study which I have come across. It was a very uh, limited study. The patient's number of patients was very small. So you cannot generalize it till further data is available. Garlic, I have seen a lot of patients who have developed burns because of garlic. So I never recommend that it can lead to permanent hair loss as well. So never apply garlic on your scalp. So in nutshell, alopecia areata is a very simple condition. It can be treated very easily. Do not worry too much about it. It is just a temporary hair loss. Just consult your doctor and your doctor will do his or her best and you will get all your hair back. 
If you still have any questions related to alopecia areata, please ask me in the comment section below. I'll try to reply to all your queries. Please subscribe to our channel and for more such videos and information, please click on the bell icon. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.